Greetings everyone and welcome! This is another fantastic Let's Play, I hope, from That Blind Guy. I've recently dropped the 92 off of my uh, screen name because I feel it's a bit less professional to have numbers. It feels like it's just some Xbox Live Gamer tag or something. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that'll give you an idea of when this was recorded because this probably isn't going up for a few more months. For the record, the date of this recording is January 11th, 2015. Anyway, this, as you can no doubt tell, is something Mega Man. Uh, this is one of my favorite series of games, one of my favorite franchises. I've never gotten to play the Zero series or the PS2 X games um, or any of the RPGs. So this is something... I, I, I've only played probably about half of the games, but... I absolutely love Mega Man, uh, so you can very well expect more Mega Man games in the near future, or the far future, uh, depending on how recordings go and how my uh, recording schedule changes over time, etc, etc. Uh, but enough about that, on to the game. What you're seeing now is a letter being written by none other than Dr. Light, everyone's favorite asshole, basically explaining... Uh, that he has created X as the first robot with free will, and he wants him to be kept locked away until humanity is ready for him to emerge. And why there is this obnoxious alarm going off in the background, I have no clue, but whatever. Um, he is explaining the first rule of robotics. He doesn't want that, the risk of that being broken, so he's locked Mega Man X away for 30 years to make sure that his systems won't screw the world over. Anyway, I'll get to more of that later. Welcome to Mega Man X. This is one of my favorite Mega Man games of all time. Despite the fact that the classic series is my preferred series recently though. Okay, yeah, if you go to your settings menu to do things, you have to go through all this crap again. So let's skip that and get straight to the game. So yeah, um, I don't need to gush about this game as much as some people feel the need to, but I'm going to anyway. So, the controls are very simple. If you played classic Mega Man, if you've really played any run and gun platformer, uh, you're familiar with what what's going on. You move left and right, you shoot, jump and shoot man, uh, as is the, uh, the nickname for this series. Though, you don't really get that as much from, uh, yeah the <laughs> X-series as you do from the classic. Kill these guys. So yeah, a uh, new entry from the classic series, from the X-series that wasn't in the classic series until X, or until Mega Man 7, intro stages. These basically just set the stage for how the game will play and I think it's a great addition. They are nice and easy. Um, they... They just give you a good sense of how the game plays without throwing the mind-numbing difficulty at you just yet. Uh, for those of you who don't know, X, the X series, no, not X, the X series was designed to be significantly harder than the original series. Which, just that thought alone, if you've played the original series and not the X series, that's pretty frightening. Uh, for the record, I've never beaten Mega Man 1. I've only managed Mega Man 2 once. Um, let's see, Mega Man 3, 4, and 5 I've never beaten, because I really don't like those as enough to be bothered to beat them. Uh, I don't know why, I just don't really care for 3, 4, and 5. 6 is my favorite of the classic series, because it's just, the weapons are amazing, etc, etc. Um, 7 is okay, I like it. Of course, Super Nintendo, I'm biased towards. Uh, but that was my favorite console back in the 90s, before the PlayStation. And Mega Man 8 was my entry to the classic series, so there's a bit of nostalgia there. There's, it's got a place in my heart, even though I can't beat Wily 1 for the life of me. Um, kill these cars. And my this was my first Mega Man game period, and it has a there's there's a big place in my heart for it, even though it's not my favorite. It's one of them. But anyway, this is Boba Fett. I mean, um, this is Vile. He is an asshole. 
Yeah. So, to beat this guy, you have to be very quick. You have to jump over his punches. You have to watch out for when he... <sighs> Piss off! <laughs> watch out for when he charges, because he's very aggressive. But, you know, if you have the right amount of patience, this is the point where the game starts to really pick up in difficulty, as you can see. He really doesn't fuck around. Oh, shit. Actually, no, I'm fucking with you guys. This is a supposed to lose fight. <laughs> you worthless. <coughs> I'm not going to try that anymore. I tried reading in my first LP and it didn't work. Anyway, he's calling us worthless scrap metal. We can't possibly beat him. But who's this? Someone has stepped in to save the day. It is a person. Guy, girl, what? Um, no, this is Zero. This was the original design for Mega Man X. Uh, before KG and Afune decided, no, people would hate it. Uh, so he was renamed Zero. He would get his own series later on on the Game Boy Advance. But for now, he's a side character, uh, plays sort of a mentor role, and he is easily my favorite Mega Man character of all time. He is a badass. He gets a kick-ass lightsaber later on, and... Granted, I suck at playing as him, but I just like his character. Uh, he's probably the most fleshed out character in the entire franchise, as far as I am aware. Like I said, I've never played Battle Network or Star Force. So, I don't know how well fleshed out those characters are. Although, as many games as they had to flesh them out for Battle Network, I would hope they went a few steps beyond anyway. Um, anyway, now things get to where you would expect from Mega Man. We have our eight robot ma- No? Actually, they're called Mavericks this time around. Uh, this game has a much more fleshed out story than the classic series. The robot masters uh, of the previous series are now Mavericks and they have a purpose. They are just, they, they are here to cause trouble. They join forces with Sigma who was mentioned earlier on. Ah, killer bunnies. Uh, okay, then you got these killer bunnies and Sisyphus robots here. Uh, shoot them. Shoot everything. Um, that is the Mega Man way. Um, why am I talking like that? I ask myself that a lot. Funny voices are apparently something I enjoy. Anyway, these bats uh, are very common enemies. They're very good enemies, too, just because of how generous they are with drops. Later on in the series, they would just become an annoyance, though. Sad to say. These wheels, not a big threat. In fact, this is one of the few times I actually see them throughout the game. This jump, very precise, but eh, no big deal. So spiky wheels of death go boom, and we get our first power up. This is why you come to Chill Penguin stage first. Anyway, we have Dr. Light here. He, like I said, he is everyone's favorite asshole. He has spread out these capsules that contain power-ups for Mega Man. They are all over the world, millions of them. They are just, they litter the planet, and somehow they will survive the apocalypse later on. Anyway, um... He has left these for X. Why he didn't just put them in the, um, the place where he left X to begin with, so he would be at full power always, makes no fucking sense, even though Mega Man X does tend to ditch all his crap in between games. Eh. The, the game doesn't make a lot of sense. So. Okay, so he's explaining that this capsule contains the accelerator parts. Uh, at this point in the series, this never goes away. He keeps these forever. It's the only thing he keeps forever, I think. Um, the, it's the dash, and it's gonna make this game go by a lot quicker. As you can already tell, I'm moving at about triple speed. And yeah, this is the point where the game really picks up and starts to take on its own identity, and it becomes amazing for it. Yeah. So, with the dash parts, you can, well, obviously you just skid, skid along the ground at high speed, and let's see if I don't die here. Yay, I survived! Yeah, don't fall. Okay, so guys, do respawn when you go off screen. Keep that in mind. Um, fucking sneaky bastards like that. So, what you just saw there was ride armor. That'll take some hits for you. It has a pretty beefy health bar. Dickhead. Um, has a pretty nice beefy health bar, and 
it can punch things. The ride armors will take on different uh, forms throughout the series, except for 4, 5, and 6, where they're all the same. I don't like 4, 5, and 6 very much. If you, uh, if you haven't played them, you probably don't get why, but... Four, five, and four and five are considered some of the better ones in the series, but I don't like them at all. Anyway, this is Joe Penguin. Uh, back to the back to basics again. We have just the bosses in a single screen room, and we just get in a punch up with him. So for this guy, we don't have any special weapons, so we really can't do anything to him other than just Mega Buster him to death or X Buster rather. I'm going to die to Chill Penguin. Uh, we cannot have that. Nah. That's not gonna do you any good, dude. I wonder if those- Shit! Damn it! Ugh. This is gonna become a running theme, isn't it? Me dying to the first fucking boss. First it was Dran, and now fucking Chill Penguin. God damn it. My first practice playthrough, I died to this motherfucker like three times. So, <laughs> I'm way out of practice with this game. So, let's do this right. As long as I don't die to Storm Eagle, I'm okay, I guess. Die. Ah! <laughs> yeah, as you can see, this guy is, is considered one of the easier bosses. But that doesn't mean he's not... He doesn't have his own degree of challenge, because he actually hits like a tank. Especially when you're an idiot and just run into him. Okay, let's not get hit again, or we'll die. And he's dead. Thank God. That's bad when you die to Chill Penguin. Because despite the fact that this is considered one of the... This is one of the harder series of Mega Man games... Uh, much harder than the classic series. More due to 3 through 8. Uh, this one, I consider probably the easiest Mega Man game I've played. Easier than 6 and 8. But anyway, by killing the boss, we get powers. That one was Shotgun Ice. We only see part of what it does. But, nevertheless, we'll see more of it later. Next up is Storm Eagle. Uh, Storm Eagle is not weak to Shotgun Ice. For the main eight stages, I'm actually doing this as a buster-only run for the bosses. I will be using the, the special weapons against many bosses and just in the stages in general. But I am not going to be using uh, special weapons <laughs> against um, uh, the bosses the first time around. We will be using it in the, the we will be using them in the boss rush to speed things along. Uh, but the bosses are so shit shit shit. Don't die. <sighs> the bosses are so laughably. Urgh! They're so easy with their weakness. You should you really should at least try to buster only them. It's not... It's a really hollow victory when you kill them with their weakness. Because you tend to... Most often, you'll stun lock them. Oh, you motherfucker. Okay. You'll stun lock them most of the time. So... You really should just... Kill them with the buster. It's more fun. Will we make the platform? No. That's... Game over. <laughs> uh, try this again. Damn it. I was doing so much better this morning. I did several practice playthroughs of this. Uh, the last one being today. Um, and I thought I was ready. But no, this is just going to be a fantastic run. So, joy of joys. Anyway, what we did, when I uh, dashed way over to the left, what I picked up was a heart tank. Actually, let's go down here instead. What I picked up was a heart tank, which, as you saw, increases your health by, like, two notches. You start off with 16 notches of your health, and you can go up to 32. 
Okay, let's do this safer. Uh, that jump that I tried to make, uh, I made the last three times. Probably not worth saying because there's no video proof. Oh, damn. But, uh, I did make the last several times I did it. So I thought I could do it, but it is a risky jump. S speed run strats for you. I've been watching AGDQ for the last, uh, yeah, for the last week. So, there you go. Okay, so, these tanks, you can shoot. Doop, 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 doop. Come on, there we go. And we get a life. So, yeah. That, that's a nice little secret there. And it pays to know that you can shoot those tanks for this here. Spam the fire button. Again, I'm playing on an emulator like I was with Dark Cloud. So, I have access to keyboard controls. This capsule contains the... I can't do the Dr. Light voice. This capsule contains the... Contains an enhancement for your helmet. Which will allow you to break some sea wings with a headbutt. Uh. So, failed Mega Man 8 reference. Yay. Yeah. I should really stop trying to read forever. Because... I sound like a dumbass. So yeah, those uh, specially uh, decorated ceiling tiles you can jump through. Another effect is that you can... Um, wall kick off of them now and break them that way which i'm not sure if you can do that with uh with or without the upgrade that might be a dash parts thing i actually don't know ah slow down is slow oh he dropped a life nice so yeah these okay these claws i'm gonna try something i'm gonna try to show something off here if they grab you uh Fire off a charge shot. It's big enough that uh, the hitboxes will collide. Yeah. <sighs> so you can very easily get um, free from those guys. What they'll do is they'll hold on to you for a second, self-destruct, and damage you that way. It's not instant kill, and it really isn't particularly powerful. But eh, better to avoid damage at, at, at all costs. <laughs> Storm Eagle! Hi! If I die to you, then my faith in humanity and myself is forever dead. So, let's see what happens. Yeah. So, okay, his attacks. He swoops. He. This is really the only attack he has that's particularly dangerous. Especially if this is your first time through and you really uh, aren't paying attention to where he's coming from. Or just don't know that he does that in general. Then he can shove you off the platform. That's why you want the dash parts. Uh, I think it's dodgeable without the dash parts. Or at least, not dad, not dodgeable. You can't dodge it at all. But it's probably survivable without the dash parts. But it's very hard. Anyway, we killed Storm Eagle and I didn't die. Take that, Johnny. Well, he didn't die either, but still. He sucked at the fight. So, now that the airship is plummeting to Earth... We can claim our victory and hope that no one gets killed. And our upgrade is one of the best weapons in the game, Storm Tornado. And with that, I'm going to call it apart. I will see you all for the next episode of Let's Play Mega Man X.